What's up, y'all? It's Marcus. Please go to ProphotoEdits.com where you can download my Lightroom presets and Photoshop actions and they'll help you out with all your editing needs. All right, so today we're gonna fix the R5's overheating issues in video with scotch tape and a toothpick. You think I'm joking, but I'm dead serious. So this isn't an actual feasible fix that you can just use out in the field or anything like that. But this is the ultimate proof without removing the internal battery. The Canon is obviously thermal throttling in this camera. So I'm no scientist, I'm a photographer, so I'm not smart enough to come up with all this stuff. But my buddy Horse Shack, he goes by the name Horse Shack on the deep preview forum, has been doing a lot of tests. And I'm going to explain this because he asked me to do this before we get into the actual video and I show you this proof and the... Uh, work around and just to show you exactly how this works and what we can prove by this um, he asked me to um, break down the details for you guys of how this actually works and he also wanted me to warn you guys that he believes that it's very likely that Canon put the thermal throttling in the R5 for a good reason like to protect the camera's internal electronics and memory cards and stuff like that and this is by no means a long-term workaround and until we learn more about why they did this, it's not advisable to use this long term because you could screw up your camera. But we're just going to get into this and show you how it works. So I'll read you exactly what he wrote so I don't screw anything up. All of the camera settings and state information is maintained in a non-volatile memory, which for performance reasons is only updated when the camera performs an orderly shutdown. It is maintained in the volatile regular RAM while the camera is powered on. By defeating the battery sensor door mechanism, we deny the camera the ability to do an orderly shutdown, which means it will discard most of all the settings and the state changes that occur during the powered on session. The R5's thermal management algorithm must maintain the history of how it's managing the available recording time in NVRAM, NVRAM. By denying its ability to write these states out, we might be able to inhibit its memory of the previous session's throttling so it would start off with full memory again, or full available time again, I should say. So basically what you're going to watch me do is, I'm going to turn the camera off, I'm going to open the battery door. Now on the bottom of the battery door, there's a little lever or a, um, a clip that presses on a uh, button inside of the battery door that tells it that the battery door is closed. So then it knows that if you were to actually just pop the battery door open, it would actually perform a memory dump shutdown to tell the camera what you just did with it. How long you recorded, um, all your settings, you know, like if you change it from F2 to uh, F8. Uh, ISO up it would keep that so you can't just pop the battery door open and pull the battery out and expect it to forget what it just did it won't do that you have to trick it so the trick here is this I got some scotch tape um, I got a piece of a toothpick I cut it off and I taped it as you can see over the um, the sensor inside the battery door so it it thinks that the battery's door is closed because it's um, pressing on that sensor right there telling it that the, you know, the battery door should be closed right now. And then I insert the battery. Then I start the recording session. So everything that I'm doing while I'm recording will not be dumped into NVRAM. So it actually won't remember that I just recorded until it started to overheat. So when I pull the battery out, pop it back in, the camera just resets and starts over like nothing happened, like it never ever overheated. All right, so what you're gonna witness right now is the camera's starting to overheat. We're at, um, I tried to take it one minute past when the overheating light started blinking. So I'm gonna let you watch this, and when that happens, what I'm going to do to prove that it's not gonna record um, or save any of the settings is I'm gonna change the, uh, right here I'm gonna change the shutter speed, the f-stop, and the ISO. So that way, if it was a normal shutdown, it would re re remain the same when I powered it back on. But all I'm going to do right now, since it thinks the door shut, is I'm going to pop the battery out. Now we're going to see what happens when you pop the battery out and it thinks that the door is closed. That's unexpected, so it's not having a time, a chance to record to the internal memory to say we just overheated. Um, or we're suspecting that it's overheating. Who knows what's really happening inside of the camera. Um, pop the battery out. And I was told to wait 10 seconds here, so I wait 10 seconds, and I'm not going to fast forward the video, excuse the video, I was trying to hold it with my phone with one hand because all my other, my other equipment is a place where I can't get to it right now. But, I just want to do this test for you guys. I'm going to pop the battery back in, and I'm, the camera's still powered on at this time, I never turn anything off, and we're going to see how much time we have left. Look at that. We have five minutes available again, and we're not overheating. And you guys know on the R5, once it starts to blink, like I'm about to show you in just a second, 
you have no time you turn it off you turn it back on as many times as you want pull the battery pull the cards it's going to tell you sorry you're overheating you're still overheating you only have this much time left or you have no time available so now i'm going to do the same thing with the um, the tape off of the sensor and the normal battery in there and if you notice by looking at this clip it did not remember any of the settings that i changed it did not save my f-stop um, my ISO, my shutter speed that I changed because it never had a chance to write it to internal memory. Okay, so now this overheat the camera with regular battery in just a typical way. Alright, so this is what it looks like when the camera typically overheats. Um, you go into this mode, you're shooting video, and there's your warning. Now I'm going to take it to the same amount that I took it last time, and I'm going to let the camera... I'm actually not going to let it shut off. I'm going to shut it off. Um, the same way that we did before so it'll be apples to apples I'm gonna pull the battery out you know just to show you that it is actually writing that data to the uh, internal memory telling it you need to overheat at this point and you need to remember that you overheated whether you're cool or not this is gonna be written into existence that you overheated and you're gonna see I'm changing all these settings and it's actually gonna remember these settings Okay, so now it's time to pull the battery. We're going to pull it the same way we did before. But now, as you can see, nothing's um, closing that sensor up. So it knows that it'll do a regular shutdown. And it's going to remember all the settings. I'm going to pop the battery back inside. And we're going to see what happens. Are you guys ready for the big reveal? <laughs> to see what Ken is actually doing here? Alright, let's pop the battery back in. And see what happens on a typical overheat. Oh! Yeah, I did that. Don't judge me, man. I'm not Mythbusters. I'm just out here trying to do this test to prove Canon is throttling this thing. Okay, so I popped it back in. We got the camera upright again. And look, it's still overheating. Only have one minute left. And it remembered all my settings. That is the true tail sign that something fishy is going on. Same exact way, but now the camera actually remembers that it's supposed to overheat not any hotter it's not any cooler it's the same thing and there you go again it's still overheating and it's going to tell you, you don't have any time available so this is so bad and this is just my personal case here is that i shot about 50 to 60 photos in that course of an hour with two cameras the r5 was one of them some of you guys know this story i've talked about it and then i went to shoot some 4k 120 and it told me i had three minutes available hadn't shot any video only photos inside of a house that was air conditioned to 68 degrees i shot that three minutes and i didn't really get three minutes worth of footage because the screen is on and all this craziness is going on so when i wanted to see when the next time i would have full capacity turn the camera off i kept turning it on every 20 30 minutes sometimes once an hour it was six hours later before i could record at full capacity this is not the real deal this is not the truth Alright, so leave your comments down below and tell me what you think and what you think needs to happen here. I'm not a scientist. I just know something super fishy is up. I'm glad that we can get to the bottom of this somehow and use this for data moving forward and uh, really hold Candace's foot to the fire and make, us, make them explain to us what is going on, y'all. We paid a lot of money for this camera, and it's not that just that we paid a lot of money for the camera. Good cameras cost money. All my cameras cost $3,500, you know, around that amount but none of the other ones overheat you know and you said this camera was going to be a photocentric camera and pushed it as such and now the last thing i was expecting is for it to perform worse than the other cameras that i own that aren't specifically video centric cameras you know so all right it's marcus until next time i love you guys leave your comments down below please like and subscribe if you're new here and um, check out all my photography videos i love you guys later